Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming. Thank you, Beth and Tally, for all the hard work. This is, it's been amazing working with you. And, um, and, and thanks to Patrick, my partner in crime in Ireland, whom I think a lot of this work would not have been possible without. Um, pu public speaking is not my strength. Uh, so I wrote a few things, so I'll read something, and then I'll say a few more things that are more specific to the paintings here, um, if you don't mind. Um, um, <clears throat> this exhibition is a culmination of an artist residency I was awarded in Ireland two years ago. The landscape has always inspired or played a strong role in my work, but the experience in Ireland really brought it to the fore. I was in a remote area in the northwest of Ireland in County Mayo called Ballycastle. This was a one block, literally one block long town, tiny, uh, s surrounded by farmland and the sea. The coastline was rugged and the ocean very turbulent and always a presence to contend with. The elements were very much alive to me in ways I had never felt before. The ever-changing sky, the winds, the waters, the lush vegetation, the constantly changing temperatures, even the amount of birds in the sky, especially starlings, gathering in enormous masses and flying in incredible shapes. The landscape seemed constantly in flux. This was in direct contrast to the West Texas desert that I am from and I am keen, keenly aware of. Parallel to the overwhelming drama of the landscape, there was also a profound subtlety confronting the vastness of the sky, especially the night sky, and the sea, again, especially at night, I felt had a deep impact on me. A sense of infinity that was very present and immediate was humbling and inspiring. A phrase that resonated with me um, by a writer writing about the Aran Islands was, uh, quote, the infinity of ways of looking. I was lucky enough to spend some time on the Aran Islands last summer, this past summer, and this past winter. And the experience was, again, life-changing. Um, the drawings included in this exhibition I worked on and completed in Ireland last summer, and they laid the groundwork for the later paintings and drawings you see in the exhibition. Um, so about the paintings, what happened right before what I've just said, co which was a kind of a nice coincidence, is that uh, the Yale Art Gallery acquired for their collection a drawing of mine that I, I had kind of forgotten about. And um, they sent me photographs and information on it. And they wanted information from me about what the medium was. And they had some questions uh, that I had to, that they wanted from me. And I remember looking at the drawing and thinking that, well, I really liked the drawing. It, it, it impressed itself on me, but also thinking like, I felt like I didn't see that, those drawings far enough. Like something started and kind of ended with those drawings. Um, and it was also at, at a time that I was feeling a little anxious about my own work, trying to find a different way of confronting kind of the space of the painting that was always um, a challenge for me. Uh, the, these, these drawings were stations of the cross drawings, and what they were was, they were small. They were like small sheets of paper, maybe that big. And they had Roman numerals going in series of 14, they would go from, I would do a number and then each day I would do a different number. So at the end of 14 days, I had a piece that I would then decide I, I would keep or not keep or continue working on. So if you can imagine doing, writing a Roman number on a rectangle and then writing the next Roman number on top of that number 
till you get to 14, and then maybe going back from 14 to one. So that starts to build, it start, in a funny way, it starts to go back and it starts to build a depth and it also starts to build space, like a, 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 a spatial relationship that uh, then, you, then you have to contend with. Um, so that was on the back of my mind when I was in, uh, like I said, when I was in Ireland. And in terms of confronting the paintings, I, it, it was always really tough for me when I would stretch up a canvas and prime it. And I'd have this really kind of beautiful white canvas that I felt didn't need anything from me to be anything. It was already kind of perfect or there was something kind of beautiful about that and even just a clean sheet of paper. And what I would do to kind of uh, specify or personalize the space for myself is I would in a funny way start measuring. I would actually draw lines and sometimes I would draw lines with, um, I don't know what you call the string with the, with the pigment, like a snap, yeah, like a snap. I would start drawing lines to just, for myself, just force me to start dealing with specific areas of, of, the, of the painting. With these paintings, what I started doing was, and you can see it more in the drawings, is each, each like in that drawing, there's six sheets of paper that are joined. Each sheet of paper is a series of 14 Ro Roman numer Roman numbers going from either 1 to 14 or 14 back to 1 or 1 to 7 and then 14 back to 8 and meeting halfway, or sometimes just because I for variety I try and do them upside down or mirror images of one another so that's how so these paintings the underpainting that's how it's built up so there's these and you can see in these because it's one piece of canvas you can, there's a subtle section where I, you could see that are, they've been sectioned off. Like this one at 12, you know, and you can't see it uh, sometimes, some more than others. But, um, so that's how this color came to be, in that it is Roman numerals, Roman numerals one on top of one another, and that's how I sort of made a space that I could then maneuver around. It became my space. Um, and so that, you know, so that's how, that's the big difference between this work and the previous work that, that came before it is that, is, is that the beginning of it. The other one, if you saw the last show or, you know, is that the last paintings were very color saturated. There was very, very kind of bright colors, very raw color, and those were made in El Paso. And I think, I think the border region obviously always affects me. And um, as you can see, these are very, in a way, very neutral, very toned down, very obviously very gray. Um, I still see them because you can see. I, I still see them. There's a lot of color in them, although it's very subtle, but very minerally. In Ireland, I was really paying attention to uh, and being very inspired by even the dry, dry rock walls that are there, just the color of the sky, sometimes just, you know, the different infinite grays that you see. And um, um, so, yeah, so these are, you know, obviously very, I'm exploring a whole different, because in a group, I don't know, I was ha having a conversation with, with an artist about this, because we're saying in a, in a way, gray does not exist really. It's, it's a degree of something that falls between something. It's a, it's a, and I'm kind of fascinated um, by, by that idea uh, that it's kind of hard to grasp as, I mentioned the sense of infinity that I was, that I'm, you know, always kind of drawn to in, in, terms of, in terms of the landscape. And also kind of, um, and also seeming chaos and kind of man's attempt at making, 
making sense of it or trying to map it out. And I'm, I'm fascinated by like early maps where you could see a map of which was the wilderness and then like lines trying to draw it out, trying to understand like where you are. And, uh, and even in the night sky, it's like, you know, it's, there's always new discoveries of, you know, the universe and uh, trying to find, you know, the dimensions of it and, it, you know, the expansion of it. And, and I'm fascinated by that. Even like as simple as like, well, it isn't that it's simple, but even like the Greeks where they saw this infinite sky and then started connecting the dots and making drawings really, making, you know, figures and animals, people out of trying to come up with something they could understand out of a, a kind of chaos. So, and I'm fascinated by that. And I think in the work, it, in, in these paintings, I think it, it, it goes to degrees of like, well, in my mind anyway, I, there's a sense that uh, it goes from like something where I don't know what's happening to, to maybe trying to measure it and trying to reason it out. But uh, um, and I, and the confrontations with it over and over of of of, of that is it it becomes like this layered layered thing that in in that I love when in a way it gets it gets away from me that it's uh, I go through a lot of steps to. I like not knowing what I'm doing a lot of the times. I mean, not literally, but a lot of times I like kind of being lost and then finding my way back, you know, in many, in many senses. Oh, you mean just say the yeah, title? Yeah, just to say the titles as everyone's sitting there. I think the titles okay. are pretty great. Right. Oh. Uh, this is called Dead Reckoning, which is, uh, maybe you all know what Dead Reckoning means. I didn't know what Dead Reckoning was, but I was kind of, it was interesting. Uh, from what I understand, you, you might, you seem to know, is um, it's, a, it's actually a very inaccurate way of navigating. Uh, that's very kind of old world, and it's using visible landmarks to navigate. But of course, when you're out in the ocean, that's not very reliable and you can really kind of get lost and lose your, you know. So, and I like that. That's what <laughs> appealed to me. So, so that, that's called Dead Reckoning. These three are called, it's North 1, North 2, North, North 3. And North just has to do with this idea of the North that for some weird reason, growing up in, again, West Texas, El Paso, desert, I've, even as a child, I was always intrigued with this idea of like the North. Canada, uh, you know, Norway. I've never been to Norway, but um, it, it was always, I think because it was the opposite. You know, it was like the kind of yin and yang thing. It was like so opposite from my experience. And, and well, Ireland, I consider North. So this is, so this is maybe, an, an homage or, a, you know, my experience of the North. Um, that one is called Rubicon, as I, as I said, which, you know, has to do with a river the Romans crossed. I think the significance of it is, is crossing a line that you can't go back. And, that, and I think it comes from like a, a Roman battle where they were going to a town and there was a river. And once they crossed the river, they were committed to the battle. Like they couldn't go back. It's like you do something, but you can't go back. So I, I don't know, I, I like that. I, I, uh, and that's why that one was named Rubicon because it was, I felt like I kind of crossed, I did something with my own work that I didn't, I couldn't go back and I didn't want to go back. I wanted to just follow it through. Uh, karst has to do with, um, I think it's, it's a, maybe a generic term uh, for a very rocky landscape, ma mainly limestone. Um, and I, I know a lot of areas 
geographic areas that are called like the karst or referred to as the karst. Uh, and the Aran Islands are definitely very rocky and so is the Buren in the west of Ireland, which is kind of an incredible area if you all ever will have a chance to visit. Um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, and this one is called um, The Sky Was a Sea. And it's a very, it's, and that title I plagiarized from Patrick. Because <laughs> we were on the phone, I was here and he was there, and he was in Hoth, which is just north of Ireland, uh, of Dublin, just north of Dublin. And I asked him what the weather was like or what's going on, and he said, it's, it's amazing. And then he described, he said, the sky is the sea. And I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of poetic. Like, I got it. He didn't have to, you know, where the, the color just was seamless. They're so similar that there was no horizon line. So, you know, so rocks out in the ocean sort of seemed to be floating. And it was just like this kind of, well, I was imagining it, this kind of vast grayness. And anyway, it's just, so that's where that came from. 